Hello, everyone. Hello. 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 <laughs> we decided to do something a little special for this discussion of the Brothers Karamazov and the Stranger. We decided to pretend that we were little podcast hosts <laughs> and have a little fun with this book discussion. Um, so we have our notes about each book, and we're going to go into some depth. We're going to talk about the Brothers Karamazov and the Stranger separately, as well as together, and just have a nice chat. conversation, a nice chat. With tea. With tea, yes. My tea, I don't think, is going to be cool. Oh, actually, it's not that warm. Okay, I thought it was going to be too hot. Do you have a drink? Just my <laughs> unquenchable thirst for life. Oh, wow. <laughs> Perfect mood for this discussion. All right, Carolyn. Emma. Does life have meaning? Does life have meaning? That is the that is the question for today's discussion. What is free will? What is suffering? What is suffering? We are going to talk about these topics um, in today's discussion. <laughs> this is just so much more fun. <laughs> the Brothers. The Brothers Karamazov. The Brothers Karamazov. By Fyodor. Dostoevsky. Dostoevsky. So, Dostoevsky spent nearly two years writing The Brothers Karamazov. And it was his last novel that he ever wrote. He passed away soon after the publication of this novel, and it was widely known that Dostoevsky intended for this book to actually be a prequel for another, even grander work of fiction. If this was the prequel, then the first novel would be following Alyosha, which is our hero in The Brothers Karamazov, Alyosha's life after the events of the Brothers Karamazov, but he never had the chance to write it because he passed away soon after the publication. The Brothers Karamazov. Mm -hmm. What is it about? Oh boy. It's about a lot. It's about brothers. <laughs> it's about family. <laughs> so there are four brothers in the Karamazov family, but we are following specifically the three. Um, so the eldest is Dimitri. He is known as the emotional lover of women. Um, and then we have Ivan, who is the atheist intellectual, and then we have the youngest, Alyosha, which is the hero of the novel, who is also a Christian, a very devout Christian, and he is known as the hero because he grants acceptance and love to all. And then we have the illegitimate child, Smerenchikov, who is treated as a family servant because yeah. he is illegitimate. Well, perhaps he's illegitimate. Perhaps he is illegitimate. We don't really know. Yes. We are basically following the dynamic between the family as well as their relationship with the father, Fyodor Pavlovich. He is very careless, he doesn't really act very fatherly or paternal towards them. They don't really have a strong connection with him, and like his eldest son Dimitri, he is very passionate about his relationship with women. And so that leads to the turning point of the novel. Dimitri and Fyodor, his father, have a relationship with with the same girl named Grushenka, and Dmitri gets very jealous, Fyodor Pavlovich gets very jealous, and it just leads to um, some strong words exchanged between them, mm. primarily Dmitri threatening to kill his father multiple times mm. in front of many everyone. witnesses, yeah. in front of basically everyone, which can lead to some assumptions. Some yeah. assumptions. Yeah. Um, so when Fyodor Pavlovich gets murdered, um, everyone assumes that it is Dimitri who killed him, and Dimitri gets tried for the murder. And then, basically, the rest of the novel is everyone trying to figure out, especially the other brothers, trying to make their own judgments of the matter and figure out what they can, should, want to do about the whole situation. It's a murder mystery. Mm -hmm. Full of just everything. Courtroom drama. Courtroom, Courtroom drama. drama. Um, but it's really just conversation. The whole book is pretty much conversation yes. after conversation. Uh, the importance of words, the importance, the consequence of ideas, definitely suffering, mm -hmm. family, yes. love, murder, mm -hmm. lust, truly just everything. What would you like to talk about first, Dennis? Dimitri? Dimitri, yes, we can talk about the brothers. Yeah. So Dimitri's the eldest. He has a different mother than mm -hmm. the other two brothers, but his father is Pavlovich. Um, we've already said he's extremely passionate, he's very highly suggestible to everything. His mind is like this little sponge that is gonna like soak up anyone's ideas, um, and he's very... I don't know, there's not a lot of 
rational thinking it's a lot of action a lot of passion but he thinks of himself like he's he is pretty self-aware i would also say like he thinks of himself as base as vile as corrupt as degenerate throughout the book like with everyone not really Alyosha too too much he does struggle with his faith with believing in God um, and ultimately what his suffering means or can mean. This is gonna be full of spoilers, by the way. And because there's three brothers, like it's so easy to read it like a little triad of like, I don't know, God, Satan, humankind, or Christ, the devil, God, whatever. Um, I feel like Dimitri is definitely either, I don't know, more representative of Christ or the humankind, like just struggling, mm -hmm. just struggling with both of the influences like on his shoulder of yes. his brother Ivan and yes. his brother Alyosha. Alyosha is, is of course always like, hey, do the right thing. I love mm -hmm. you. You can be a good man. You can yeah. be a strong well, person. Also, I think something that you could claim mm. is that Dimitri can represent like humanity being judged, you know, yeah, like, that like, as well. the religious yeah. judgment. Here the devil is struggling with God and the battlefield is the human heart. And then you loved Ivan. Do you want to talk about how much you loved Ivan? <laughs> I don't think you understand. <laughs> Wait, do you understand? I want to hear what made you care for him so so much. At the start of the novel, Dostoevsky, Dostoevsky is like, Alyosha is the hero. That's why I'm writing this book for Alyosha, about Alyosha. He's the hero of my story. But to me, like, Ivan, Ivan is just at the core of the novel. He's at the heart of the novel for me. He's just like the most... I don't know, the most human of them all, the most well realized of them all, but that's probably completely biased on my part because I just relate to him so much. So um, what made you yeah. relate to him? Tell us. Okay, so how do I want to describe it? So Ivan is like the middle child. Mm -hmm. um, Ivan and Alyosha have the same mother. He's, he's an intellectual, but like very foolishly and vainly so. Um, mm -hmm. He is obsessed with belonging to the realm of like words and ideas and philosophy, um, but he's only really in that like lofty realm. He's only entered into it in this kind of um, way where he's not really thinking about the consequences of any of his like ideas or philosophies or anything that he's really spouting. Like he hasn't really realized that. He's 23. He's been to university a little bit, I think. I don't know if he's done yet. Yeah, he just, he suffers the most, he suffers the most to me, yes, as everyone in the novel. Mm -hmm. He believes in God, he doesn't accept God, he can't accept God. Spouting the philosophy that life has no meaning, truly, that everything, everything is permitted, which is an idea that is a huge catalyst for the novel, mm -hmm. um, which Dimitri, you think it's going to be the catalyst for Dimitri to commit an act, everything is permitted, meaning that because there's no God, because there's no ultimate moral judge of anything then you can do you can do anything you want because nothing matters nothing has meaning without this ultimate power which i don't agree with at all um but someone else takes that idea and then kind of runs with it anyway how can i love life when like i don't see its meaning when everything is just suffering i think that i think ivan out of all of the brothers is the most like three-dimensional because i yeah. think he his struggles and him trying to grapple with his beliefs and figuring out his own place in the world, I feel like that creates a stronger character than someone like Alyosha who is the hero, who is like wholly good. I feel like we've talked about this a lot in the past with books that we've read where we have a main character that just like is perfect and although I think that that can be, that can create a strong main character, I do feel like someone like Ivan who struggles is so much more human yeah, and so much more think. relatable. Yeah. Yvonne says, There is decidedly nothing in the whole world that would make men love their fellow men, that there exists no law of nature that man should love mankind, and that if there is and has been any love on earth up to now, it has come not from natural law, but solely from people's belief in their immortality. That is what all natural law consists of, so that were mankind's belief in its immortality to be destroyed, not only love, but also any living power to continue the life of the world would at once dry up in it. And not only that, but then nothing would be immoral any longer, everything would be permitted. And there exists no law of nature that man should love mankind. I just disagree. But why? Because I think that humans naturally strive for human connection. Man's love of man is just inherent in us. And who put that in us, God or, or something else, I don't know. 
but I think that like naturally we strive to create connection with family, friends, loved ones, you know, mm -hmm. romantic relationships. Here's my thing, and that's why it makes it so hard to talk about stuff like that. Like Yvonne eventually gets to the point where he's like, Alyosha asks him, what do you know? What do you understand? And Yvonne is like, I don't understand anything and I don't want to understand yeah. anything. Like he's sick to death of thinking about it, of yeah. it taking up so much room in his head. And like that's... With that, I do agree with. That's where I've come to, absolutely. Yeah. I'm like, I don't understand. And yeah. honestly, I don't want to understand. Like I just want to go yeah. live in yeah. a cottage in the woods. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. With animals everywhere. That's yeah. it. And then he goes on to say there's no virtue if there is no immortality. Um, and this is going to be so good because it's going to lead eventually, once we finish with this book, right into The Stranger because, mm -hmm. to me, Marceau and The Stranger is just like a direct continuation of either, I guess, the best or the worst, however you want to look at it, of someone like Yvonne who has taken his contentions, his philosophy to, the ex to, to, the com to their completion. But Yvonne's like whole dealing with all of this really, really gets to him and like reading the brothers and the stranger together, mm -hmm. I just, yeah, I was not doing very well. <laughs> I was doing very unwell. The brothers get acquainted where Alyosha mm -hmm. and Yvonne sit down together. This mm -hmm. is my favorite chapter. Uh, yeah, I think it's probably my, my favorite, favorite section in the whole novel. He's in this realm of ideas, he's struggling with it all, but he can't fully commit to anything. Like, he's still very much in the realm of like, just existential anguish, yeah. you know? Even if I were to become convinced that everything is a disorderly, damned, and perhaps devilish chaos, if I were struck even by all the horrors of human disillusionment, still I would want to live. Is there such despair in the world as could overcome this wild and perhaps indecent thirst for life in me? And I have decided that apparently there is not. Though I do not believe in the order of things, still the sticky little leaves that come out in the spring are dear to me, the blue sky is dear to me, some people are dear to me, whom one loves sometimes, would you believe it without even knowing why? I think that's just where I am. Yeah, I th hearing you read that, like, I see you in that. No, but not, not like, in a, in a... In a good way. In a good way. Just I like don't want to be the, alone, the love but, of you know, life, yeah. I do love life, I think life is precious. I think I'm between Alyosha and Yvonne because I do question. Yeah, I think everyone. Everything. Is. Alyosha encourages Yvonne. Um, his thing is like, I think that everyone should love life before everything else in the world. Love life more than its meaning. Certainly love it before logic. Certainly before logic. And only then will I also understand its meaning. I do think there are times in life, though, like as much as you can try to love it, where. Like, life happens and it gets hard to love life. Yeah, no, that's not my problem. My problem is like, oh, mm -hmm. Yvonne. Well, Yvonne's problem as well is like, what the hell is the point? Like, I don't care what suffering, what joy. What is the point of what? Living. It's all meaningless. What is it? What am I supposed to be doing? Like, you go from, we're going to get into this. Loving things. This is so interesting to so me. So much. <laughs> but then at the same time being like, well, what is the use of, what is the use of loving this? What is the use of any of this? I feel myself saying these words and I know that it doesn't matter. It can matter to you. But how? Because even if it, even if it doesn't matter to anybody else, it's part of you. It's your belief. But I'm nothing. But you do have a lasting impact in the world. But everything's gonna come to naught, so there's no such thing as lasting. But I think there is in a human way. Like, like, okay, Fyodor Dostoevsky, he yeah. lives on, he's not forgotten because he wrote books and people are still reading them. So he is lasting, even if not in the physical sense. But technically, in the physical sense, because you're holding the words that he had in his mind that he put down on paper. Yeah, but I'm saying it doesn't matter. I'm saying it's all gonna come to nothing. Yeah, eventually it will, but yeah, so why then can't it help? But why can't it matter in the present moment? Well, that's the struggle, making it matter. Yeah. And then the last point in this whole dialogue that Yvonne and Alyosha are having is they're, they get into God and, like, Alyosha is, of course... At this point, I think he's left, or almost about to leave the monastery to mm -hmm. go out into the world and to gain some experience before I think mm -hmm. it's eventually understood he's going to return. But Yvonne says, It's not God that I do not accept, you understand. It is this world of gods created mm -hmm. by God that I do not accept and cannot agree to accept. With one reservation, I have a childlike conviction that the sufferings will be healed and smoothed over, that the whole offensive comedy of human contradictions will disappear like a pitiful mirage. Um, but then he's like, wait, no, even if this happens, even if, like, you know, God or Christ returns, 
in this tradition smooths over everything, everything is healed, everything's forgiven, all suffering is somehow redeemed. I do not accept it even then and do not want to accept it. Let the parallel lines even meet before my own eyes. I shall look and say, yes, they meet, and still I will not accept it. That is my essence, Alyosha, that is my thesis. Even if there is a god, he's gonna be like, I don't accept you. You have to beg for my forgiveness. I do still think that you can question things and you can still see meaning in life. Like, I think that there's like a, there's a balance, like there's an in-between, and I think that that's where I am. Yeah, that's why I wanted to bring up Rakitin. Okay, yeah, Rakitin. Rakitin. For me, he's the most kind of, not logical, but he's like the, um, compromise. Rakitin's thing is like, of course it's possible to live without God, to have your own morals, to love humankind, just because this like, ultimate power has been taken away, doesn't make humankind evil all of a sudden. We're gonna move on to the Grand Inquisitor. Yes. Which is a poem, or a story, mm -hmm. which Yvonne has written. Or, I'm not sure if he ever writes it down or if it just stays up in his head, but he tells it to Alyosha. Mm -hmm. Yes. The Grand Inquisitor tells Christ that he cannot allow him to do his work on Earth because it goes against the work of the Church. And how um, the Grand Inquisitor says that Christ should have given people no choice instead of free will, um, and instead taken power and given people security instead of freedom. Mm -hmm. So he's really questioning um, the choice of humanity's ability to have free will. An Inquisitor is Ivan's rationalization and Dostoevsky's condemnation of any institution that would take away an individual's spiritual freedom in order to create a world with less suffering. The Grand Inquisitor says Christ should have taken the bread and offered mankind freedom from hunger instead of freedom from suffering and freedom from choice. Dostoevsky's intention was every individual is free to choose whether to believe or disbelieve in God, whether to accept or reject morality, and whether to pursue good or evil. Mm -hmm. I think that was like ultimately the whole point of the novel. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, Ivan though in the story is being like this choice is far too heavy for the average person. Yes. A normal person cannot bear this in any way, shape, or form. How exactly. could a higher power expect us to be like a higher power? Exactly, um, which is the the burden of free will. choice. Yeah, yeah. And what the church has done in the story is taken that all away. Yeah. Just being like, if you follow us, you're mm -hmm. good. You're good. Yes. You don't have to do anything else. Can we talk about the confession? Obviously, Dimitri gets tried. Um, and eventually we learn that Smerdyakov confessed. Ivan and Smerdyakov have a few meetings with one another, and one of the final meetings, Smerdyakov confesses to murdering Fyodor Pavlovich and taking the money. He faked his fit, murdered Fyodor Pavlovich, and stole the money, which he presents to Ivan. Um, and then, obviously, that now creates a lot of turmoil for the rest of the characters. You could claim that all of the brothers are guilty yeah, because they have some kind of role guilty. in their relationship with the father. Really, no one is innocent. And we're back. We have the ending now um, where Dimitri is tried and found guilty for the murder, although he did not commit it. Um, although, like we were saying, technically you could you could claim that everyone is guilty, mm -hmm. even Fyodor Pavlovich. Um, so at the end, Alyosha is talking to um, is it Ilyusha? Ilyusha? Ilyusha asks them to remember their friendship um, at the present moment and that he promises to remember them. And it's this really sweet moment where then, like, the final scene is them saying hurrah Karamazov about Ilyusha. Um, and then, do you want to talk about where Ivan is left? at the end of the novel. Yeah, Yvonne's in the pits. Um, <laughs> He's in he the pits begins despair. to hallucinate, perhaps, or perhaps the devil really does come mm. to him, I don't know. Um, but yeah, he begins to hallucinate. His guilt is momentous. He tries to clear his brother's name by mm -hmm. declaring himself the murderer because he feels so much guilt. Um, and eventually, I think he just falls into brain fever. Yeah. Um, and we don't know what happens yeah. to him. Yeah. We don't know what happens to anyone. No. And I think that it's interesting how Dostoevsky left us with Alyosha being praised and Ivan hallucinating, basically, and turning into... Yeah, he just, you know, he just can't 
fit the struggle yes. in his body and his body gives yeah. out. Yes. And Dimitri ultimately, obviously, is like planning to escape to America, but... Potentially. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it's interesting how we have followed these... And Smirnikov obviously is... Commit uh, suicide. Commit suicide. And I think it's interesting how we follow these characters through the whole novel and then that's how Dostoevsky leaves us with them and I think that can kind of emulate and illustrate his own beliefs where again like Alyosha is seen as the hero where he's left being praised like I just found that final scene it was really, really affecting it was really beautiful yeah. honestly yeah. yeah the brothers Karamazov the brothers Karamazov I'm sure we'll rehash this yes it's so good. It is very five good. Five stars? Five stars? I didn't rate it because I feel like it's one yeah. of those books... It's meaningless anyway. Mm. <laughs> Shall we move on to The Stranger? Can I get this? Oh, yes. Oh my gosh, your amazing copy. <laughs> that is so interesting. Interesting is, yeah, really the right word. The Stranger, or The Outsider, mm. by yes. Camus. Albert Camus. I loved it. Let me just start off by saying that. You didn't like it as much? Not very much, no. Okay. As a piece I had to read, no, uh, no well, no enjoyment was had, that's not really the point, but I just didn't do anything for me. Yeah. See, I think why I found it so interesting was I don't agree at all. Okay. And I quite agree. Yes, which is so <laughs> interesting. I mean, yes, some things are meaningless. Wait, wait, yes. let's let's what? just describe a little bit. If, oh, okay, if okay, okay. Hasn't okay. read The Stranger. Yes. Sorry, don't going right now. We're just going right into it. <laughs> this whole piece is is absurdist. It's uh, an illustration of absurdism. Life has no meaning. There's no inherent meaning in anything. Everything is meaningless, and so we follow this young man. Um, the novel begins. Mother died today or mm -hmm. yesterday. Mm -hmm. I can't be sure. Um, there's just no stableness anywhere this man goes through life pretty indifferent pretty indifferent to everybody and everything yes um i don't know if indifferent is really what's in there though but he really has no reaction to his mother's death he doesn't really process it the way that you would expect him to process it he doesn't shed any tears and he kind of goes through life in this way when he meets a woman who kind of falls in love with him a little bit mm -hmm. and she asks him to get married it's the same thing he's like well if you want to there's yeah. not a lot of meaning there for him in, or in anything. Or care. Like, he doesn't, he doesn't really seem to have, like, many deep mm -hmm. connections or feelings towards other people. Yes, he's unable to engage in any deep connection, relation, or meaning to life because he doesn't perceive any meaning in anything that he's doing. So when he gets involved with this man in his apartment building and some kind of, yeah, crime. Mm -hmm. Some crime, crime is going on. His neighbor's not a very good man, but this leads our protagonist, Marceau, to go and shoot someone, basically with no reasoning. Yeah, truly. no reason why. Um, and he doesn't need a reason because for him there can be no reason. But society then marches in at this point. He's on trial, just like we have the trial in The Brothers. Uh, he's found guilty because he is guilty. He murdered a man. But throughout the trial, it really does seem like he's there less for murdering someone mm -hmm. than for not showing emotion at his yeah. mother's funeral. To the point where they even bring in... They bring it up so many times. Yeah. And um, they bring in... Um, it's not a priest. Hmm? It is, it is a is priest it? at the end, yeah. Yeah. Who visits him in his cell. I thought they called him by a different name. Like, a chaplain? Something like that, yeah. where you're supposed yeah, to confess, or chaplain. confess yes. your sins before and, you're executed. Yeah, and I think the chaplain gets so angry at him and tries so hard to explain that there is meaning and that you should believe in a god. And it really felt so much like the mirror of the Brothers Karamazov, mm -hmm. where we're grappling with two characters that are one is very convinced that he should have religious beliefs and that there is god, there is meaning. And then we have Merceau, who is like, I don't care what you're saying. Yeah. Leave me alone in yeah. my cell. Um, there is no meaning. Yeah, but no one can accept that there is yeah. no meaning because then he becomes a direct threat to, like, everything, to yeah. society, to everything that has been set up, the mm -hmm. law, religion, yeah. um, the chaplain goes away. Like, it's rocked his whole world because Marceau won't admit anything, won't even consider that there is a god or that there is meaning, and so he's ultimately exterminated because he's he's an outsider, he's a stranger to 
society to society to yeah. everything that has been set up under this guise of mm -hmm. this has meaning so you have to act accordingly and when someone doesn't display emotions that align with what has been set up or doesn't agree with your laws like he has to be exterminated before he reveals you excommunicated know. yeah yeah like everything like that so mm -hmm. okay so why did you like it because i've always been the type of person to think that like there like i like being able to look at things and find meaning in them and think that someone it doesn't have to be a god or whatever or anything like something out there sometimes i also like to think that like maybe it's the people that i've lost that are like i feel like guardian angel is kind of like too like broad of a term but i just i like to think that there is something out there that is looking after us i don't know what it is that's the whole thing about like ivan like he's questioning everything like i don't know what it is but i like to believe that something is looking out for me mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that i do have a purpose because i was get i got the chance to exist and i think that that is a beautiful thing and that um it's like the Walt Whitman poem, um, um, let the powerful play go on and you may contribute a verse. And the big question is, what will your verse be? So I think that we are all given the chance to contribute a verse into the world, into society. And we have that gift, in a sense. And so I think, isn't our existence, isn't humanity itself proof that there is meaning and that no. <laughs> okay. Why? Why would the... Wait, why? If you can, please, you know? I'm Yvonne over here. Be, no, I, I, no. Wanna, I wanna be saved by you. I'm not trying to save you, though. Mm -hmm. Um... Someone's gotta try. <laughs> I think just because we exist. What's so like, meaningful about that? Okay, okay. I'm gonna give you a personal example. Okay, please, yeah. The other night, Emma read a book that really affected her, and mm -hmm. she got very emotional about it, mm -hmm. and she was saying that how glad she was that I was her friend. Mm -hmm. Isn't there meaning in our friendship? You can say no. Yeah, yeah, there is. But I think, I think maybe, okay, maybe it's a misunderstanding, but I'm, I'm okay. saying life is meaningless. I mean, there's no, there's no one inherent meaning. Mm-hmm. It's just whatever you would like. Yes. You feel yourself oh, capable of getting yeah. to it. Exactly. No, I completely agree with that. Okay. Because everybody has the ability to say whether they believe that there is meaning or not. If there is meaning, it's completely selfish. <laughs> I agree with that because, I again, it's like freedom of choice. Like, you're choosing yourself, your person, whether to find meaning in things or not. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So for me, of course, there's meaning in our friendship. Mm -hmm. It's great. It's beautiful. <laughs> I love it. It's wonderful. One of the best things in my life. Oh. At the end of the day, I know we're going to die. In the grand scheme, it's meaningless to the outside world. I could see that. In The Stranger, mm -hmm. Camus is like, well, this is the ultimate bare truth of the world, and this is how someone knowing all of this, really living that, mm -hmm. would go about it. But Yvonne is, of course, more like you and I, who's living mm -hmm. in the real world, living with the consequences. You can claim that everything is meaningless because everything is fleeting. But the fact that there's no meaning doesn't have to be depressing. That's true. It can be yeah. very liberating. It's either, oh my god, life has no meaning, or thank god life has no meaning. Mm -hmm. Because you can't do anything wrong, you can't do anything incorrectly, but it's almost impossible to carry those ideas out when we live the way that we live so i think my parents have instilled this in me from a very young age because my parents are very positive that like my ability to create art whenever i was younger and i found out that i was good at creating art my parents always and everyone that i met told me it was a gift you have such a gift that's what everybody would tell me and so i always saw life as like little gifts like our friendship is a, is a gift and um, happiness is a gift but again it's your choice whether you choose to see it that way or not mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so I think I've always just been the type of person that tries to see the good yeah I think since a young age I've just been like we're just gonna die 
at like we are gonna die whatever age you know just like so shouldn't we shouldn't we make just have a good time exactly that's the thesis yeah. yeah that's the thesis you can you just wake up and you're like what the hell am i actually doing nothing matters why don't i just go roll around in the grass and pet some cats that's all i want and it doesn't matter if that's all i want yeah or if that's all i can accomplish but that is also selfish in its own way yeah not in a bad way yeah of course yeah, yeah that's what i'm saying mm-hmm but to, to go to the context of the novel, <laughs> sorry. Um, but I think that's what I think that's what's the beautiful thing about literature is that it leads to these conversations mm -hmm. where a novel can make you question these things and have have these conversations. I think that that's what Dostoevsky wanted. That's most likely what Camus wanted is to have an effect, mm -hmm. whether it's meaningless or not. Yeah, on, right. the, on the reader who is experiencing their work and their thoughts. Yeah, yeah. for me, this novel, like, just from a personal standpoint, didn't do... I, I mean, this was a reread for me, but... Oh, it, I didn't know that. Yeah, I read it in oh. yeah, high school in French. Um, en français. But, yeah, it didn't do anything for me. It didn't present to me any new ideas. Nothing that wasn't already going around and I found it on the whole really really bland and boring mm. which of course is reminiscent like the whole writing style it's just very cut and dry which is reminiscent yeah. of the way that Marceau goes through life but um didn't oh god the process of reading The Stranger was just painful because it was so boring to me really yeah I don't know I just I found it really interesting because I've never read an absurdist novel before mm. so this is my first time experiencing a character really like this to preserve my happiness and exactly. positivity. You gotta put some I've illusions shut it out. in place. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But this was also my first Camus, and I really want to read Me more too. from him. Yeah, that's all I've read from yeah. him so far. Final thoughts? <laughs> yeah. Oh, did you want to? Did you have anything you wanted to compare them to each other? Yeah, I just think that Marceau is like the, you know, continuation of mm -hmm. someone like Yvonne, like yes. taken yeah. to, yeah, taken to the true example of the mm -hmm. philosophy i guess where even at the end where he's sentenced to death he's just like yeah whatever doesn't matter like at all literally doesn't matter at all yeah. if i die today or tomorrow everyone is gonna die it's a thing i feel like this is making me look really <laughs> flattering i feel like it's making me look As like i am in you know little la la land no but we may fairies. like bring me over there <laughs> get me over to la la land right this very second Where's my ticket? I'll take one. <laughs> Here you go. Thank you. Yeah, it's just someone, like, comparing it to Yvonne, who, who, he's there, you know? He's living that life, but, like, even in The Stranger, like, not to make it all doom and gloom and you can't find any joy or inherent meaning, like, Marceau still is always all the time like, oh, hey, this is a nice day, mm. or the sun is really nice, or I love the sounds of the city going on, or I like swimming, um... So it's very much, I feel like, just a very feeling-oriented yeah. existence yeah. where it's very, I don't know, it's a bit more, I think, present tense. Immediate. For me, mm -hmm. yeah, where it doesn't really have any meaning. You're just there to feel, yeah. to feel everything. And no feeling is final. Like, it's not really hopeless. It's kind of, mm -hmm. it's kind of nice. Yeah. Because nothing matters. Yeah. And there is, like you said, beauty in that. Yeah, I don't think it's, I don't think it's really very bleak at all. Mm -hmm. Unless you, you kind of go down that path. Yeah. Or just to be like, you're on Earth. There's no cure for that. Yeah. You might as well have a good time. Yeah. You might as well read some good books. Absolutely. Might as well some cat. talk about some good books. Why not? Mm -hmm. Tell people you love them. Yep. Go swimming. Look at the sky. Andre's sky. Ugh. Oh. And admire uh, some oak yeah. trees. <laughs> have a good one. <laughs> yeah. And if you have a bad one, doesn't matter. See, that's where I think there's comfort in it. Mm -hmm. Like, if you have a bad day, oh well. Obviously, we should have prefaced it at the start. This is my opinion. Yes. This is your opinion. Yes. I don't. I love yeah. you for your different opinions. I love opinions. you for your different opinions. And that's how it should be, folks. Yes. So please be kind to each other in the comments. <laughs> I can take your opinion upon myself and yes. I can do a little and dance with it. Yeah, and, and I, think, I enjoy it. I think that's what illustrates a beautiful friendship is being mm -hmm. able to have different opinions and to try and understand each other and to try and have these like really interesting conversations. And respect each other. And respect <laughs> each other. And, and be, be nice. nice.
end on that note. <laughs>